alive! <laughs> I'm so excited. Yes. Yes. Very excited. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Because I do have this, uh, I'm working with a different, you know, sound system going on. Okay. Hey, everybody. It is so awesome to see you. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Black Carnivore channel, and we talk about eating meat on a carnivore diet. And so if that's of interest to you, definitely stick around. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Mia, so good to see you. Seabliss, Delisa, Miss D. Oh, my gosh. So many of you here. Um, I am excited to have this conversation tonight. So, um, and, uh, and I ask you actually hit the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can get notification every time we go live. Um, and, uh, also exciting news. We now have, um, I, like super chats and super stickers. So if you guys know what to do with that stuff, notice at the bottom of the, um, the chat box is uh, a little um, icon. It's a dollar sign icon and you can buy stickers and super chat. So if you like what we're doing here, you want to support it, you want to see more of this kind of content, um, you know, help us to continue to make it and, um, and we will right. do it. So yeah, click the little bell, um, the, the little uh, I, my dollar sign icon. And, um, and I think if you're, you do that, you're, you know, your question will pop to the top and I will make sure to answer your question. So, so um, a couple of dollars. Yeah, absolutely. So without further ado, let's dive right in and talk about the top five mistakes that people make on a carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so Arian and I have talked about the list and came up with some Change ideas. your your headphones. Oh, okay, okay. They just did the thing again. Oh, okay, okay. My headphones are very um There we go. You know, irritable. Better? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, my I don't know. Headphones, oh gotta get a new <laughs> mic. I'm gonna, you know. Well, yeah, so here, press the little dollar button so I <laughs> myself a better quality mic. My other one conked out on me and, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta get something else going. Um, okay. Renee Willis. Great to see you, Ronnie. So glad you made it. Um, very glad. Uh, okay. So, um, we're going to dive right in and talk about this week's topic. So, uh, you know, so Arian and I had an opportunity to walk through, think about and walk through this list um, that we created of the, the top five mistakes that we see people making. And um, the fifth one, um, Arian, you type, we were chatting back and forth and you typed in, um, can't read your labels, don't understand your categories or something like that. And yeah. I was thinking, I so I didn't understand that that's that was what you were suggesting. I thought you were just saying to me, like I can't understand your suggestion. <laughs> oh, thinking. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, well, you know, is that what I said? Damn, why don't you just uh, make some suggestions then? If you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, right. Why okay. are you being so difficult? <laughs> why not? Like, why not just make some suggestions instead of being like, I don't understand what you're talking about. What, what are you? I, I can't read or understand. What, no, no. <laughs> and I just put that on you as like just your problem. I'm not even going to ask yeah. a question. It's just yeah. everything you're doing is wrong right now. <laughs> everything you're saying and talking about, like, I don't understand. Um but and then once I finally got it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah. So why, so, why don't we start with number five? Okay. <laughs> and go right. descending order. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I feel like just about probably every carnivore slash keto person has at some point realized a thing that they were eating that they thought was okay. Like, you're just... You're enjoying the hell out of it, and then you turn it around, and you go, oh, oh, I don't know what half this stuff is that's in this. This doesn't sound nearly as healthy as I thought it was, or it said natural, and then you're going, what? Oh, but what's maltodextrin? That doesn't sound natural. I've never heard of a maltodextrin tree. I don't think there are farmers who grow that. I, <laughs> That yeah. is, I, 
I can't count the number of times I've been tripped up by mm. something like that. Yeah. I bought mustard, mustard, spicy brown mustard. And I start, I loaded it up on something I was starting to eat. And I was like, God, this tastes sweet. And I look at it. There's honey in it. Like oh. the third ingredient. And I'm like, what? since when is honey like a regular part of mustard? Mm-hmm. Now, I would get it if it were. It, it didn't even say honey mustard on the front. Like, right. I would not have purchased that. But it did not say honey mustard. It just was in there. And I was like. So the next time I go and buy Frank's hot sauce, I got to look. The next time I go and buy, like, I don't know, a, a jar of, like, rosemary, I have to look. Like, yeah. who knows? So and you it, have to look every single time. Yeah. And then, like, you become that annoying person at the grocery store. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> self-conscious of myself because I'm in there and I'll go to the spice aisle for something and... I'll pick up something where it's the label just says sage, for instance, and I should be able to just trust that it's sage, mm-hmm. but I know better now. Mm-hmm. So I can't. So I'm picking up every damn bottle. What is this? Okay, yeah. this is all right, all right. All right. I can do that. Picking up every sauce. What's in this? And then you're making those split decisions as you're in there. Like, I don't, uh, this doesn't feel right. No, just not going to do it. Just not even going to buy it. Like, I think that's part of why we end up um, buying like, or why we end up making so much of our own stuff because it just becomes easier. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I got to remember to bring my reading glasses to uh, the supermarket Mm because now I'm like trying to read ingredients. So yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, Siebla says sometimes the ingredients of brands that you've been consistently purchasing will change ingredients. Yeah. 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 That definitely happens. And Delisa, oh my God, my first super chat. Five dollars from Delisa Bradley. You are so worth supporting, she says. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yes, yes. I feel so, um, you know, so appreciative, so proud. Thank you so much. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, Wow, you know, interesting stuff happening here. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Um, Yeah. I can't think of a time that something I've been buying has changed ingredients, but I'm, I feel like it's happened, but Mm -hmm. it's probably been over the course of years. Yeah. I think it's more happened to me when keto, because I don't eat as many like actual products on carnivore. Um, Yeah. But yeah, but that's definitely happened to me or, you know. Yeah, like, I guess, you know, they only increase sugar. I mean, that's the only change that happens. It's never a that's, decrease. Yeah, like, I know there are a lot of things that I realized um, probably really early on, like um, looking at bread and realizing that there's sugar in every loaf of bread that you buy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's it doesn't really taste sweet, or at least you don't think it does, because you're used to really sweet things, or at least I'll speak for myself, that's how I was. I couldn't taste the sugar in bread, but I bet I could now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, C. Bliss is clowning. Uh, why did Ad Arian have to look like he was on The Price is Right, though? <laughs> like he had just won new cookware? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah all that <laughs> um you did but i think that was entirely appropriate i mean this was a really exciting moment this was our first first one I so really... <laughs> yeah i didn't expect that i especially didn't expect it uh so early like yeah. i'm thinking all right super chats exist now uh we'll probably get one weeks down the line yeah yeah. Like, no, as soon as you announce it, super chat. Yeah. So, yeah, you're awesome. All of you guys, so awesome. I really appreciate it. And, hey, yeah. we have a bunch of people in here. So, again, hit the like button, subscribe, and the little bell icon so you can get notification every time we do a video. Um, okay. So, let's uh, – well, actually, so uh, and Mia brings up a good point about um, trying to addict us to – uh, you know, to different kinds of food. So this is a mm-hmm. point, like if you follow Joan Eifland, she's the person who's done a lot of research on um, 
on uh, food addiction. And she is one that has said that that's been a strategy that many of these companies that, well, the cigarette companies then went and bought all of these snack companies. So they have used that st that uh, strategy of getting people addicted. So they add more and more sugar to these products and um, get you to sample them at the supermarket. And then, you know, you come to be habituated to the taste, desire it and go and seek it out. And you become addicted before you even, you know, like purchase a product or make a decision that you're going to eat more sugar. So yeah, that's yeah, like so you with that mustard, that. like the mustard tasted good and you didn't even realize that there's honey in it, which is sugar. Yeah. So you, yeah. a thing that's not supposed to taste sweet at all has a sweetener in it, possibly just so that it could be more addicting. I, I mean, I can't even imagine why else? I mean, mustard is one of those things, like you say, it's it's intended to be sour, vinegary, mm -hmm. perhaps salty, but not sweet. So I'm like, I don't understand how you would add sugar to this. And it's not on the label. It's not like, hey, this is sweet mustard. Hey, this is honey uh, mustard. Yeah. It's just in there. Yeah. So that was, too, and it was expensive. You know, it was that like Sir Kensington or whatever that brand is. Oh, so, okay. you know, it was like five bucks. And I'm like, man. Wait, was that the kind that comes in the um, the little tub with the twist top? Yeah. And it's got oh, the okay. guy with the like fancy suit and the like monocle and the cane. I mean, you know, this was fancy stuff. And so, it was like you. Some Monopoly stuff that day. Yeah. So like you, I'm like, you know, should I, you know, get my $4 worth or $5 worth for the honey, mm -hmm. uh, the honey mustard? But I decided, no, it's, that's not going to work for me. So I, I threw out the whole jar. I scraped off the mustard off the plate and off the, the, you know, the thing that I was eating it with. And then, you know, just kept it oh. moving. And that yeah. would frustrate me so much because good mustard is really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not exactly carnivore, but it's tasty. True. Yeah. But yeah, if I'm like, if I'm out somewhere, especially like at a cookout or something, and um, the meat isn't like especially great on its own, which it usually isn't at cookouts, like just a plain hamburger patty that's been grilled, I feel like at most cookouts, it's not going to taste good. So you got to add something to it. So I would probably add mustard. Yeah. Wait, why would you think it wouldn't taste good? Oh, because they're usually overcooked. Yeah, well, you can't get there at the end of the day. You got to be there in the first shift. You got to have your eye on the grill. You, I got to stand next to the grill and tell them, take those two off now. Give me those. Yeah. 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 You got to be a little more aggressive, especially now. I feel like, um, you know, we've gotten as a country so, you know, um, into this idea that meat is bad, we should be eating less meat. And I think as a consequence, people don't know how to cook meat. And I know that even when I went keto, like I really had to take an effort to to teach myself how to cook. And um, my my uncle lives in Albany and my mom and I lived here in Brooklyn. And so for a long time, our strat, um, you know, the family plan was we would meet at the Culinary Institute of America, which is in upstate New York. And it was about halfway between Albany and New York City. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it was nice to go up there because basically it's this culinary school and for fine dining and stuff. So they have these restaurants and it's basically the students, this is their classroom. So. Um, you get like a fine dining experience for a lot less cool. money. Yeah, it is cool. Um, so generally it's great. Although one time I was there and like the two, two students, they collided as they were supposed to be bringing like my coffee and dessert. And they collided. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one forgot that you're supposed to serve. I don't know. You're supposed to serve from the left and clear from the right or whatever was happening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm sure they got marked down that day but um but yeah that was pretty uh but it was it's pretty <laughs> cool to get like this fancy experience but they also have like a student store up there with all of this like culinary stuff and cookbooks and everything so over time i started buying stuff like that just to teach myself because i you mm -hmm. know i didn't otherwise know how to do it um so you know first i like leaned into the whole crock pot thing and then i started teaching myself how to you know to grill and how to fry and you know so that's kind of what i did that's cool yeah 
And then I think the other part of this is when you read the label and you don't understand what's there. Mm -hmm. So then you may make an assumption that this thing is okay because you're only looking for certain buzzwords like, well, I didn't see sugar or high fructose corn syrup, so it must be okay. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of people um, avoid food coloring and dyes and I don't know that they necessarily have been like explicitly linked to health problems, but Mm -hmm. they're not natural. So I wouldn't be trying to eat those as much as possible. Um, And then there's all the different, like sugar has like 28 code names. Indeed. Um, and perhaps, I don't know, maybe I'll look up, um, a list of all the different, uh, words for sugar and, uh, put a link in the description later. So you should come back to the video later, but, uh, yeah, but I think that's a great point, but you know, most words that end in os, uh, you know, are some form of sugar. So that's Mm -hmm. something, you know, what, what is it? Dextrose, malatose, um, Mm -hmm. sucralose, uh, sucralose, sucrose. sucrose. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to see lactose or galactose as an ingredient in most things, Mm -hmm. Uh, but those are sugars. Uh, oh, anything fructose. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes in your foods, so this is a carnivore channel, but if you were keto and you were eating some like plant stuff, anytime you see like a juice in an ingredient, like that's a sugar. They yeah. added that to sweeten whatever was in there. A lot of times it's apple juice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great point. And generally speaking, you know, when I, I mean, when I look at foods, if it's got, you know, a whole lot of ingredients, mm-hmm. um, especially ones that are chemically sounding, I just decide that's not the product for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I had um, a really sad experience at a uh, Sam's Club <laughs> a couple oh, weeks wow. ago. <laughs> so I'm looking at all their meat, trying to find stuff for cheap, and uh, th- nothing was really cheap, but there was some good stuff there. Uh, I bought some like ground bison that made some good yeah. burgers and ground wagyu beef, and those are really oh. good. Yeah, and the wagyu was cheaper than the bison. I was surprised, but um. I'm buying all this stuff, and then I see uh, there's the the rotisserie chickens, Mm -hmm. and they're cooking like 30, 40 chickens at a time, and you can smell them all throughout the meat section. So I'm done shopping, and I'm thinking, all right, let me, I should check out these chickens. I know a bunch of carnivore people talk about like just being able to eat a whole chicken at once, and by this point, I'm hungry. I feel like I could down a whole chicken. I'm like looking at this thing like it's going to be one of the best, funnest challenges I've ever given myself. And I was talking to my friend and I they said, yo, you should check the check the ingredients first. So I turned the chicken around after I'm done lusting after it. And uh, there's like 30 ingredients in it. And it's a chicken. Like, what right, do you need to add? Like chicken and spices. All I Rosemary, should see are the thyme. names of spices. Yeah. No, but I think there was a, it was dextrose or maltodextrin, one of them. Mm-hmm. What is that doing on a chicken? Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. Yeah. And all because they can't add more fat, which would help, like, I don't know, that helps get the skin crispy and the spices to stick and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, it it uh it was sad, not a yeah. good time. Yeah. So yeah, I just what I I like that some people promote it, and it's how I would promote being uh, really carnivore or keto. And I think this is it actually stops you from a lot of these problems. Is just eat simple ingredient foods, mm-hmm. like you said, a really short ingredient list. If it's like more than four yeah. or five things, you probably don't need that. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing with carnivore that we talk about, you know, one of the joys of it is that it really simplifies the kitchen. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're, you're 
you're not getting a lot of ingredients. You're not doing a lot of, you know, different or strange cooking techniques. You're not making a lot of different things. It's one thing. So, you know, you take that same principle to everything that you eat. Um, you know, when you're buying a steak and you're cooking it, like you don't need 25 different ingredients. Like, you know, the meat itself is the star. And if you got yourself a nice fatty, juicy piece, I mean, you're done. Yeah. You're done. It's All you really need that salt. simple. Yeah. All you need is salt. And you, we come, and I think coming from, especially, um, you know, I, I put a lot of effort into like trying to teach myself to cook and like all of the recipe books that I had, um, you know, there's like 25 ingredients on the list. When I decide to make a recipe, I got to go to the supermarket and there's a whole bunch of things to get. And I spend the day chopping up this and chopping up that and washing this and saute this and then add these things and saute them and then, you know, add them to the crock pot and like, you know, it's, it's hours of work. And, mm -hmm. you know, what I loved with carnivore is I got so much time back. Even when I yeah. cook a big chunk of something, it still is like five minutes to prepare it and then put it in the oven. And then, you know, maybe five hours later, the brisket is done. But mm -hmm. still, I didn't have to do anything during that time frame. So I like the simplicity. Yeah, I feel like it feels like a cheat code for cooking. Mm -hmm. Like anyone can say, well, not anyone, but with a little bit of work, anyone can say, oh yeah, I can cook because I just eat meat. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not making you chicken cordon bleu. No, I'm not making you like dressing. But what I can do is take a beautiful steak and put it on a pan and then salt it, either salt it while you're cooking or salt it after, it doesn't matter, either one works. And that is a delicious piece of meat. It doesn't need a thousand things added to it. Yeah. It doesn't need a process. Or like you said, take some meat, season the heck out of it, throw it in a crock pot or Instapot or um, wherever, whatever you're gonna cook it in and just come back later and it's done. Yeah. And trust that salt is all you need. I mean, yeah. I think that we don't, um, we don't give salt enough credit, but that's actually next. So why don't we transition into number right. four of the top four, four mistakes is not giving salt enough credence. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, uh, you you take the the tastiness of salt and then uh, and we'll, I will swap and I'll talk about the the health benefits of salt or we'll go back oh. and forth. OK, so, yeah, um, salt is and it's you didn't know this when you set this up, but lately I've been eating just salt on my food mm -hmm. and yeah, it's perfect. Um, I think Why the did only you thing, decide to do that? I think I just got lazy. Uh, um, so I haven't done any roasts lately. I need to soon because I'm running out of jerky. But so lately I've been eating uh, steak and bone marrow, fat trimmings, and I think that's it. So with steak, what I don't like, so I like leaving the oil in my pan um, and then using it the next time I cook. That gets harder to do. Yeah, I can yeah. I can serve the oil. I want the taste of steak on my eggs. I want the taste of <laughs> yesterday's bacon on whatever I cook the next day. All that's it's all good to me, so I don't mind any of it mixing. So um if I put onion on the steak, if I put like say onion powder on the steak and then cook it, there's gonna be crunched up onion bits all in the pan. And then I got to clean that out and either try to reintroduce the oil afterwards or just throw out all that perfectly fine leftover oil. Yeah. Or I should say fat, actually. So it's just easier to just cook the steak and then salt it after. And then just if I need even more salt, which did happen one day, I was super low on salt. Um, I'll just cut a piece and then salt that salt where the, the slicing happened mm -hmm. and then eat it. Mm -hmm. And it turns out a really good steak only needs salt. Yeah. Like I knew it. I knew I had done it before, but now I think I'm truly embracing 
or I'm re-embracing because I had done it for a while and then I got into onion powder again and now I'm back on just salt. Like it's all you need. Yeah. A whole roast. You can take the biggest piece of meat that you can find, cook it good and salt it. That's all it needs. You can add more if you want to. You can do a lot more and there's nothing wrong with that. But like it's not necessary. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And, um, and it's hard, you know, cause in the beginning you think, oh, you've got to add something. You've got to at least add pepper mm-hmm. <clears throat> and my hand reaches for it. <clears throat> but when I finally, you know, go lean into all salt, it's, it's great. It's fine. Yeah. It's really, I don't, I don't Oh, I want to say like it takes good meat to just be salted, but I don't even think that's true. Yeah, any meat as long as it's yeah. not rancid. It's and when it's rancid or when it's starting to go, just add more salt. That <laughs> that really helps it a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> like if you if you smell it and you're like, okay, this is probably starting to go bad. Like if I don't cook this today, this is the last day I can do it. <laughs> yeah, you just put more salt on. That's how you handle it. <laughs> I feel like that's bad advice, but I also know that that's what I would do. I, do, I, I feel like it's actually probably not. And since you talked about how salt um, is an important part of the food digestion and, and making sure that your acid, your stomach acid is strong enough, mm-hmm. a- adding more salt probably um helps to both make an inhospitable uh, environment for bacteria that's growing mm-hmm. on the meat, and it probably helps your um, stomach acid to become more acidic. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually think there's some real reason but behind doing that. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me that um, we like the taste of salt it feels nourishing. And I've even noticed that I can try to have salt by itself, like just the the salt under the tongue, that only works to a certain extent. And then after that, it tastes disgusting. I don't want any more. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I can wait a half hour and cook in that same situation and salt the food and like really salt the food. This is literally what happened to me. This is like me on Tuesday. And the food still tastes good with what I know would normally be too much salt. Yeah. But like just straight salt did not taste good to me. So I think there is a thing where like you need the salt with the food. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it helps the digestion or if the body just knows like there's something happening where it seems like you are rewarded for having the two together. Yeah. It it wouldn't surprise me if that that like actually aided digestion. Yeah. I wonder that too, because I definitely feel like when fasting, like my whole thing with salt is just really messed up, but when I'm eating, it's fine. Yeah. And I do know I use a lot of salt now. I mean, I do. And I know, I recognize that other people eating my food might be like, Ooh, this is really salty. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they would find it <clears throat> unpalatable, but I think that they might you know, especially if you're going with like the, the dog one today, you might be thinking, Oh, this is too much salt. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. The last time someone ate some of my food, it was, uh, oxtails and I'd made them for me. So yeah, I'd salted the heck out of them because there was one of those days where I wanted a lot of salt and then they tasted some and they're like, Oh yeah, no, this is good. And I actually like does this taste right to you? Because I was curious. It, I think that was like maybe my first or second time making oxtails. And she said, no, they're good. It's a little too salty for me. Like, I think you went a bit too far with the salt. Mm-hmm. And I thought, OK, so this confirms my theory that if I cook for anybody else, I need to under salt the food for me. Yeah. And just salt it at the table or on my plate. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> so U M M N M S R A says, don't you think we may have eaten fermented food periodically? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And probably not periodically, probably a lot. I mean, you know, before there's refrigeration, you know, 
we dried food, we potted it, we um, made, you know, pemmican, and I'm sure there was some rotten stuff that people were eating. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, certainly. Um, I guess I would wonder, how do you ferment meat besides that nasty Thai meat way? I think that's the way. You put it in some kind of container and it's just in there. Or it's not even. I mean, maybe you have a carcass and you're working on it, but, you know, you're. it takes time to work mm. through. I mean, if you have slaughtered like a, a mastodon or an elephant, you know, that's 2,000, a 2,000 pound animal. Like, it takes time to, to process that. And uh, so I would think that in the process, you know, some of it's rotting as you're doing that. So. Yeah. And then, so I know I've heard that um, some indigenous people, I want to say in the Americas, like Central America, they'll like cut open the deer and lay thick pieces of the meat, like like three, four inches thick, um, like on a bush with the inside facing out so that that inside dries. And then everything under that layer that dried stays fresh because mm-hmm. you've got skin on one side and the dried meat on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they do that with uh, whales and the, all these other like really big animals. Mm-hmm. I would think so. I would think so. Yeah. I don't know that I could do fermented meat. Um, I think you would be surprised at what you could do. Okay. <laughs> It seems Stunty's right with me. (laughs) You'll eat fruit and veggies before eating fermented meat. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I think you'd be surprised. But, you know, there you go. I'd want to try it at a place where, like, somebody had done it and I I knew they knew what they were doing, maybe. So I could just try a piece of it and see if it's okay. I'm not buying a roast and fermenting it and then trying it that can't be my first try of fermented meat yeah yeah i don't know Um, it's not it's not for me but uh (laughs) but but let's not wander into the grossest area so the other reason the other reason why salt is a mistake for people is that they are not getting enough can you hear Mm -hmm. me does that sound okay yeah um So, you know, salt is super, super important, especially on a carnivore diet. And if you're not getting enough, you're probably going to feel very fatigued. You're going to have brain fog. Um, You know, you're just going to have all of the feelings of the carnivore flu. So you really need to make sure you're eating enough salt. And um, that's the biggest mistake that I see people making is, you know, we we are still, you know, many of us have been so indoctrinated with diet dogma um, from, uh, you know, the the so-called experts of the day that we are concerned about eating fat. We're concerned about eating sugar and you have to let that go when you are following a carnivore diet because you can't follow you can't blend you know the idea of eating low salt and low fat with a carnivore diet it's just not going to work yeah. so yeah 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 and you just salt, mm-hmm. go ahead you you need it you have to have it now that doesn't mean that you have to have the same amount that someone else has and this was I started to make this as a, a suggestion for one of the tips, like, or for one of the mistakes, like you don't have to follow anyone else's example. Mm-hmm. So if someone else is eating a ton of salt and that doesn't taste good to you, then that's too much for you. Don't have that much. Right. And the amount that you need will change from day to day and week to week and, and, you know, season to season. So how much you need in the summer is going to be different from how much you need in the winter and how much you need after, you know, you like did a a hard workout at the gym is going to be different from when you, you know, binge watch something in bed all day. Like, you know, so your needs are going to fluctuate. And the only way to make sure you're hitting the right need is to follow the um, signals you get from your body, which are the cravings for salt or not. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Like it's, I actually find it's really simple. I wish I could, tap back into how I felt when I was first starting to remember how hard it was then. Cause 
I don't know if it actually was hard or if I just needed to get better at actually listening to myself and the signals were there all along. Yeah, absolutely. For me as well. I think for me, the biggest problems I had when I started was one, trying to eat too much protein at one time Mm -hmm. and two, not eating enough salt. And if I had not done those things, I think I would have been in a great, much better position. Mm. Yeah. And maybe I, maybe I should have tried those HCL pills as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I had that. I'm glad I, I was already starting with the idea that I think my stomach acid is off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the salt can really be helpful with the stomach acid, like you said. So, yeah. um, which mm-hmm. going along with that, um, I guess number uh, 4.5 is if you're drinking too much, if you're drinking too much, you're especially drinking diuretic water, things. Drinking too much water or anything. Uh, I would really say anything, but yeah. I think if you're like trying to be healthy, the thing that you're going to fall on, where you're going to fall down on this is probably going to be water. Right. Yeah. So that's another part of the diet dogma. People think that, um, you know, if they, uh, you know, to help them lose weight, they should drink a lot of water to uh, cleanse and detox. They should drink a lot of water um, to look young and have fresh, dewy skin. They should drink a lot of water. Um, you know, we have been sort of taught that water is a cure-all, but, um, what generally happens is that you wash out the electrolytes that are in your system. And so you make things worse for yourself. Yeah. 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 I wonder, I know definitely for us, like as eating low carb, we do not need a ton of water. I think Mm -hmm. usually. Yeah. Everything that I'm saying where I just, it sounds like I'm giving a wide generalization. It's a usually, it's a most people kind of thing. Um, I wonder if it's actually, if it is more beneficial for the high carb crowd because their body's already retaining a bunch of water. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've kind of thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's probably, you know, might be the case, but you know, if you're retaining and you're drinking a lot of water, I think what ends up happening is you're just retaining more. Mm. So I don't know. But I do know that since I stopped drinking coffee, I am um, definitely drinking. um, I'm definitely uh, drinking less water. Um, I think that the coffee, you know, I've complained before that coffee, you know, throws me off and makes me a little bit more, um, you know, it, it makes it harder for me to maintain my hydration. And I think that's mm-hmm. partly because caffeine is a diuretic. Um, but also I'm drinking that and not drinking water and so on. But since I took it out, you know, I really am about, you know, about two liters in a day, which, mm-hmm. you know, I think like that's probably still a lot, but you know, it's, it's pretty good. I'm trying to think how many, how many ounces is two liters? A liter, I think, is 33 ounces. Oh, okay. So, so it's a half gallon. It doesn't sound that crazy. It still might be high. Yeah. I, it's yeah. definitely, I think, more than I drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I probably could do less. Um, well, I don't know. I love the bubbles. <laughs> and it's, especially now You're doing that... sparkling water? Yeah, I know. I'm not drinking any like tap water, so I don't know if that's probably bad because it's it, it is acid that you're adding to the water. But yeah, but uh, it's good. I'm not gonna be mad at you for it. I know, I know. I love it though. No, no, I'm saying I'm not mad at you. Like, yeah, I I'm mad that, at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I recently discovered the joys of sparkling water, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I have to remind myself that I'm not actually thirsty sometimes as I'm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now that I've added these new fasting salts that I got, um, I, I'm like loving it. You know, it's just the flavor is just right. And I know a lot of people have complained, you know, because I've recommended the keto chow drops, both the fasting drops and the electrolyte drops. And 
people have definitely complained about the electrolyte do drops, the taste of them. And for me as well, I feel like for a time, like the taste was, didn't bother me. And then at a certain point it did. And I think that, that, you know, that you have to follow your taste. Like it tells you whether <laughs> you're getting the nutrients that you need and it, and the more salt in it, the better it tastes to me. So, you know, that's to me an indication. I probably need more salt. So about those, um, we're kind of going long on this one, but I have noticed that I, the drops, I don't want as much, but in that same glass of water, I can put just salt and it tastes better. Yeah. 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 Water without salt or something in it, like, doesn't taste good to me anymore. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yikes. It tastes <laughs> like something's missing. It tastes flat. Mm hmm. So. I think that's part of why the sparkling water tastes so good to me. Like the bubbles are good. And the fact that mm -hmm. it does have some salt in it. And I guess some other minerals too. I'm not sure what, mm -hmm. I don't think the kind I have says what's in it exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the fasting salts I bought, uh, have salt, potassium and, um, magnesium. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I don't know. I I'm enjoying it. Definitely. Yeah. The fact so that, well, what's in the keto chow drops? Why do those taste so different? So the electrolytes or the fasting drops? Uh, the electrolytes. Yeah, because I think it has more magnesium and the sodium and potassium are more evenly matched. And so mm. that's, I think that's why. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, because too much of that and it almost tastes like I'm supposed to chew the water like okay it, you know how uh well, how can i explain this it's like it tastes like something i should be chewing it doesn't taste like water anymore okay because it's got this strong mineral flavor mm -hmm. um to the point that like I have to just if I put too many too many of those drops in something, I have to just force myself to drink it. Yeah. Because yeah. it does not taste good anymore. Versus like even really, really salty water still kind of tastes good even when it's too salty. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, you gotta figure you gotta figure out your thing, but salt, very good. Don't make the mistake of um yeah. Seamless is making fun. Ada had no words for chewing water. Yeah, that's a new one. I never heard that one before. <laughs> um, I know I'm not the only one who's just tasted like this. This does not taste like water should taste. This tastes like something I should be chewing. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes okay. strong. Water's not supposed to taste strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on to number three which is focusing on the scale too much or yes. over measuring. Yes. So, you know, th so there's a lot of things in that category for, you know, one thing people come here to lose weight. Totally. That's okay. You know, that's, that's kind of what we do, but this weight loss on the scale is, um, you know, that may or may not happen in the beginning. And it's definitely not the most important thing. And as I always tell people, you know, only you see that number on the scale, but everybody can see exactly how tight your pants are. So don't worry about what the number says. Worry about, you know, inches lost, clothes getting looser, you getting tighter, you feeling healthier. That's the thing to pay attention to and to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I would say the first order issue in this is the scale. Looking at the scale all the time, weighing yourself all the time, thinking that, oh, I did something different yesterday. So I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to be a half pound less. No, not necessarily. A lot of times, no, it's not going to work that way. It's not going to happen that fast. And it's just not going to, there's not going to be this simple one-to-one, -one, I did this, so I lose weight equation. Um, mm -hmm. Especially because 
being carnivore more than any other diet I've done, more than any other time that I have tried to get healthy. Um, my weight has been stable. Like you said, pay attention to how your pants fit, not what the scale says. Mm -hmm. um, my weight has been uh, stable while other things have been changing. And I think mm -hmm. carnivore more than anything else does that. Like you're be, you'll be building muscle, not realizing it until mm -hmm. someone says, you, you've been working out and you, you were focusing on the scale and you're like, what, something's different? You see something? Mm -hmm. Because my number is still the same and I've been sad about that. That's right. So that's right. I, I think that, yeah, number one is get off the scale. Just kind of throw the scale out the window. Mm -hmm. It's not that important. I know in the interview that I just you just posted, like I talked about my weight a couple times, and that's mainly because I couldn't remember what my waist measurements are. But it, that is much more important to me. Like the the weight that I hold now, okay, great, it's smaller. What's really more impressive to me is when I see somebody I haven't seen since April and they go, yo, you lost weight. Yeah. What's yeah. going on? Like, that's that's great, have you lost weight? And they don't say it like, oh, I think you're getting sick. They're saying it like, you, you look good, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Yeah. That's a great feeling. So, sorry, Seamless says this funny comment. In my best Raven voice, keep it sexy. Fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're yeah, you're right about the um, you know, about keeping uh, you know, people being able to see and see your your progress. Right. Um, and I definitely, even now, you know, I guess everyone is so used to people like gaining weight and, um, or losing weight and then gaining it back. And so now, you know, it's been several years and I, I'll run into somebody I haven't seen in a while and they're like, wow, you know, you really look great. You look beautiful. You look, you know, you're just, you look great. And I know they're in their head. They're like, oh, I thought you would have gained all that weight back, but look at you. You didn't <laughs> like, Wow. Do they say it with this shock, this like... A, a little, a little. I mean, and not in a mean way, just kind of like, that's what you see. That's what you expect. It's, you know, it's not common to see people lose weight and then keep it off, especially yeah. when they've lost a lot of weight. I mean, you know, you just, you expect those people to eventually gain it back. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. what happens for most people. So they're looking at you like, what? You... You beat the odds. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then they're really happy for you. Like, mm -hmm. oh, good for you. But then I wonder, I bet a bunch of them in the back of their head are like, maybe I just didn't. Okay. I hope you don't gain it later. Mm -hmm. I hope it yeah. stays this way, but I'm really not confident because, and why would they be? No one keeps their weight off. Right. Literally yeah. no one does. <laughs> But that is what is going to help us evangelize. I mean, more and more now people are like, this weird thing you're doing, I guess it's okay. Yeah. What is it you're doing? You know, can I, should I try it? Yeah. yeah. So large picture uh, says, I'm really happy you said that because I've been living by the scale. So, so glad. Get off the scale. And, and, you know, we're talking about the, um, the human body scale, but also the food scale. What's the other way that people get really, you know, crazy with the scale that you oh, can think yeah. of? The, the measuring of the food, the, uh, just the, I, I see people post like their, um, they use like carb counter and my fitness pal and whatever other apps to like measure everything that they're eating and then they're staying on top of their calories and depending on what diet you came from before this like you may just be used to counting calories so you're just doing it in your head with everything that you eat and it's like no 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 you don't need to do that it's not necessary at all yeah and it just it makes you more of a probably an anxious wreck i would think mm -hmm. um, i know I wasn't happy when I was counting calories and trying to keep 
macros at it. Even even just macros. Forget calories. Even just macros. Not necessary. Well, that's the thing that I was going to say most, you know, macros. Like, I think, um, well, I see Esther says um, uh, that she weighs every day and keeps a record of it, but is aware of how clothes are fitting. And that really makes her smile. So mm-hmm. if you can weigh and measure without it impacting your day and how you think about your body and yourself, then it's fine. It's just another mm-hmm. data point. But yeah. if you know, but if you're getting on the scale actually changes your behavior and changes the way you think about yourself and your mood, then you don't want to do that. Um, but you know, in terms of weighing and measuring food, I think that, you know, the pursuit of macros can actually make you make worse choices rather than better choices. So that's kind of why I, you know, I've gotten off the macro thing and kind of discourage people from looking at that. Cause I think what ends up happening is that you eat weird foods. You know, you eat, you look for, um, as you try to hit this perfect ratio, you end up, um, you know, adding separate fat and separate protein to bring them together to get that right macro. But you're, Mm -hmm. you know, these are both now processed foods because you've taken pure fat and pure protein, which doesn't happen in nature. These things always seem to come together. So, you know, instead of just choosing the fattiest source of meat and, you know, and relying on that to be, you know, your source, you're trying to, to create this artificial ratio. So. Yeah. Like, uh, the two to one ratio, three to one ratio, four to one, all that stuff. Like you don't need to follow any of those to a T. You don't really need to think about them. You just need to eat. And like you said, Mm-hmm. Nature already does this for you. So if I'm just eating a chunk of a cow or a chunk of a chicken or a pig or whatever animal, it has the fat that I want. It's already there. I don't need to go find fat from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And this is what's frustrating about the way meat is served in grocery stores most of the time because they trim all the fat off because we've got it in our stupid heads that fat is terrible for us. So then you got to go make an effort to buy trimmings. But even then, once you have the fat in a natural form, it's not you trying to just eat a spoon of tallow or something, then you can just put some trimmings with whatever meat you have Mm -hmm. and you are eating the food as it naturally comes, as close as you can get it without going out and hunting your own cow or deer or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the way to go now. Um, uh, so I, so I do think that, uh, you know, so people do come to carnivore from keto and ask me about macros. And so, you know, that's, that's something I think that people should let go. And I think the other problem with focusing on macros too, is you get to this position where, you know, it's kind of like, if it fits your macros, it's okay. And uh, so for a long time, I like drank wine, ate chocolate, and then, you know, ate, ate beef. Yep. Which, that, was, uh, that was me besides yeah. the chocolate. Yeah. 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 So it, it fit the macros. But I, you know, I would say, like, I don't know if that's the healthiest choice. So you have to kind of decide that for yourself. Yeah. 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 I was carnivore plus whiskey and swore up and down that I was, and I was, the vast majority of my calories were coming from meat, coming from animals. So it's not that I wasn't carnivore at that time, but was I a healthy carnivore? Was I anywhere close to optimizing my health? No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, All right. So let's move to number, um, that was number three. So number two, is eating too much or too little mm-hmm. yeah so uh, I, yeah go ahead the, i guess what i'm curious about is what are your thoughts on eating too much how does a carnivore eat too much well i think that you you have to pay attention to what is works for you. So you can eat too much, especially of things that don't work for you specifically. 
Um, and so the things that are, you know, kind of like most appealing, um, you know, people might dive in on the fat and like their stomach isn't ready for it yet. And so it causes all kind of the digestive trouble. Um, you know, they think that they need to eat, you know, a certain number of grams of fat or they, or they're aiming for that two to one ratio of fat to protein and their stomach's just not ready for it. You know, mm. there's that. For me, like I said, I think I was trying to eat, uh, especially for people who are fasting and they want to eat one meal a day. And so they try to eat, you know, a whole two pound steak in one meal. You know, you might not be able to do that. And I think for me, I was trying to eat too much protein in one setting and um, and that I just couldn't do it. And so that caused gastrointestinal you know, distress. So that's what yeah. I mean by eating too much. Um but then on the flip side, I think you, people still have that old diet dogma. If you're trying to lose weight, that you need to be hungry and you need to eat a lot less. And so um, they end up eating too little. And, um, you know, and sort of, you know, we have this idea that not eating is virtuous. So anytime you not eat, you're doing something virtuous. But it's it's actually counterproductive on a carnivore diet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually a um, it kind of goes to what we talked about yesterday in the Zoom that like pain is not a thing that we should be striving for, towards. Right. And yes. I think anyway. So. No, you, you can eat food that tastes good and fulfills you and makes you happy without it being a bad thing that does. That's not gluttony. So go ahead and eat that steak and eat as much as your body wants at that time. But then also stop when you're full. Don't try mm -hmm. to force yourself to finish all of it. Um, but yeah, it, it's fine for it to be good. It, that's okay. I promise you that's fine. And yeah, for a long time, um, I was scared of eating too much fat. So I wasn't eating any red meat because the dogma said fat is bad. Right. Um, I mean, this is back in my like paleo days, but mm -hmm. yeah, I could definitely see that eating, um, just just holding on to your old rules, your own your old thoughts, um, when you really should be letting go of that and realizing that all of that was wrong it didn't help you in any way. That's what got you to the point that you were like probably so unhealthy in some way that you said, all right, I got to go carnivore. Like, I'm going to try this extreme thing that I'm scared of, but people say it works. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to try it, you got to really try it. And that means you got to let go of that old stuff. And that includes the like eating too much is a thing. Yeah. 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 Because, you I, know, mm -hmm. go ahead. I, I was just going to say the, the OMAD thing. Yeah. That. I could see, I could see myself getting sick if I tried to eat OMAD every day. Mm -hmm. Because just, you would be trying to eat too much at one sitting or you would end up not eating enough? Or uh, the, the first one. I think yeah. it would be trying to eat too much in one sitting and maybe I'd do like, I'd probably really, instead of like literally OMAD, it would be like an eating window of like an hour and a half or two hours. Mm -hmm. And still in that time, like, I'm probably going to feel sick when I'm done. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot of food to try to eat at once. Yeah. Uh, so Renee says, I know I have issues if I eat more than four ounces of protein in one sitting. I get really bloated. Um, really? So that might be uh, an example of um, someone who is still you know, their body is still ramping up the production of, of the acid so that you, you know, it just may take time to be able to eat more in one, um, in one. Group. Oh yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Cause um, you know, we say eat smaller meals. Like if you are having trouble, start by eating smaller meals. And that mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's good that she knows like right what her limit is. Mm hmm. So that just means you just need to stay below that. And that might mean for a while you need to eat smaller meals or yeah. just your four ounces of protein along with however much fat you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 
So definitely pay attention to that. That is that was number two on our list. And dun dun dun, what is number one? Number one, the biggest mistake that people make. Um, and so it is not eating enough fat. Yeah. 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 So it's huge. This, again, still the old diet dogma that we have that fat is bad, that we shouldn't be eating that much fat, that saturated fat is bad, that, you know, fat is not is something that you should, you know, I, I, I mean, when people go keto, like they don't, I don't know that they quite get it, but like we're running primarily on fat. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, we're talking about 60, 75, 80% of your daily calories coming from fat. So you can't yeah. do that on the, on a tablespoon of added butter. Like that's not going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not possible. Um, I do think though that carnivore has a like specific difficulty with this because, um, especially if you're doing carnivore in the way that I would say is most natural, which means you are eating whole meat. Um, you're not doing, uh, you're not just chugging heavy cream along with your steak or something then where are you getting all this fat from? Because like I said, at least here in America, they're trimming our steaks, our roast to death. Um, so I think you do have to seek out more fat. Because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just not going to be there for you in a lot of places. Now, if you're lucky enough to just, you got a local butcher that's easy to talk to and you can say, make me, I, I want all my steaks untrimmed give me as much fat as you can or they're just giving you trimmings like i i recently found a place to get trimmings and i'm very happy about that mm -hmm. but yeah if you can't do that i think it is kind of tough yeah well i will say that um i just ordered uh beef tallow from um you know like a person who just like hand renders it. Uh, so it's grass fed. Um, it's made from grass fed suet and, uh, and it's super, super yellow. I don't think I've ever seen, um, tallow this yellow, like close up. And, uh, so that tells you like the grass fed meat has a more yellow, um, fat because the, the cows are eating more grass and I don't know, but, um, but in any event, so that's what I ordered. It came today and I was trying it. And man, it is really good. Like I've tried mm. a bunch of different brands, but this was really good. So I posted it um, in my um, on my Instagram channel. Um, I think in, I don't know, maybe it was Reels or no, it was in my stories or I don't know, somewhere, somewhere on my channel. Right. Um, but uh, so the guy is in Pennsylvania and I think he just, you know, I saw a note on his Etsy page where, you know, he was saying he was taking a break. This was over the summer. But, you know, apparently as a full time job, this is just sort of a hobby. But like it's kind of taken off and people are requesting more than he can provide. Um, so, uh, you know, but right now he seems to have some. So I would go and check it out. But it yeah. was. Yeah. But it, I like that it. um was very flavorful but mild you know a lot of times suet like it has a really strong like you know powerful flavor but this was mild um it was softish at room temperature you know not rock hard and um and it tasted really good i mean I, even not sweet but almost a caramelly kind of taste to it um mm. and it was tasty even without salt so it was good like i could I mean, I could go to town with this with a spoon. Um, okay. I, mean, I shouldn't, but I, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, feel I like would I say, want to try that now. Yeah, I would say just um, you know keep like keep looking around out there at what what is out there, what products you can buy, and um, you know and see you know, and find the fat that you like, you know, and if you can get beef fat trimmings, get them. If you like the taste of suet, you know, get it. Um, I still struggle with suet. I don't really like the taste of it like that. I can't eat it raw. Um, I love roasted bone marrow. That's delicious. So if you can yeah. get that, you know, that's great stuff. Um, 
but look for look for more sources of fat and not you know not liquid stuff not vegetable and seed oils but animal fat and and get beyond butter i mean butter's not bad but um get beyond butter yeah um or get past I, butter i hope there is no product coming called beyond butter just like beyond see, yeah i i took a pause cuz when you first said it i was thinking what is beyond butter yeah yeah. Is this a new thing that I haven't heard of? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was going to pull a dab. I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that if you are going to, I think all of those are good suggestions. I'm trying to think if I have any more. Um, sometimes buying a roast from a different place will give you more fat than other mm-hmm. places. Like yeah. some places they don't trim a, I feel like a lot of stores are less likely to trim a roast as much as they'll trim a steak. Mm -hmm. And especially if you get a big roast, like Mm -hmm. more than like seven pounds, like big, Mm -hmm. those sometimes aren't as trimmed as if you just bought a couple pound roast Mm -hmm. where it's just entirely lean. Um, Also, if you're going to buy roast, as far as I'm concerned, the only one really worth buying, well, the only two maybe, are what, briskets and chuck roast? Oh, yeah. Those are great, though. Yeah. Um, those are those my actually, absolute favorites. So, like, and apparently... I've, I've got, I think, 26 more minutes before the brisket's done. Woo! Oh, another brisket. Yeah. And I saw somebody earlier, I think it was Johnny, was like, hey, I want more mukbang. Where's your brisket? Is it ready? <laughs> so... Yeah, twenty six more minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and that brisket has like a really good like fat cap on the top. Not of it, this right? one. Not this oh. one. <sighs> yeah, I know. So I added some of this um, new beef tallow uh, and some pieces of suet to it. It's yeah. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand the world today. But. Um, but, you know, what I find, too, is different supermarkets. I mean, now that my taste is or my palate is more sophisticated, it's more attuned to me. Like I can tell the different supermarkets have different suppliers and those that meat taste different, you know. And so I, I do notice that and I do now seek out the supermarkets that have meat that I actually like the taste of and um, and have more or less fat on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. That makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, it just makes sense that they would uh, some places just have better um, or not better necessarily, but what we would call better butchers that trim the meat less. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, if not that, then um, I mean, you've got your rolls. Getting fat on a steak is really hard to do without spending a whole lot of money. Um, I, I mean, I think for no amount of money. In New York, like, for no amount of money can I find fat on a steak. Like, I see these pictures on Instagram where people have got, like, this much fat around the edge of the steak. And I'm like, where are you getting this? Is everyone taking the same stock photo of a steak? Because I have never in real life laid eyes on a piece of meat like that. So how is that happening? And I feel like I need to check the giant around me again. Cause yeah, most of the stores around me, they will, they trim the heck out of their ribeyes. Um, yeah, that's frustrating. Um, somebody brought up, well, you brought up bone marrow and then I think Renee is saying, um, the same thing in her chat. Like, yes, bone marrow. I find on the days I crave fat, bone marrow satisfies it. Mm -hmm. So I tried to look up exactly what the content of bone marrow is. And I've, I haven't been able to find a definitive answer yet, but it, it feels like fat. It is fat, bone marrow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, red blood cells, immune system, and fat. That's, oh. Um, yeah, it's entirely fat. So it's good. I mean, it's, you know, and remember, fat is an organ. So when everybody tells you you got to eat organ meat, you are. All the yeah. time, you are. And when you eat, you know, like chuck roast and brisket, like the way the the muscle fibers are like bundled together, they're bundled with collagen. So you're getting, you know, all the things that everyone is telling you, you got to get a lot of, you're getting it all just by mm-hmm. eating a regular chuck roast or brisket. Right. Yeah. 
Um, so large picture asked, how do you cook fat? Um, no, that is not a dumb question because it's not a thing that we normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, so how I do it is if it's like trimmings, I'll cut them into kind of thinnish slices and fry them. And I'm just frying them until they get soft. So I don't even know how much time that is, but it's less than like four minutes. Mm-hmm. So I have no happy answer for that. Like, I still don't feel like I have figured it out and I mess it up all the time. Um, I cook things at too high a heat and I can see the fat burning and I can smell it and taste it and it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. So I have ruined many, many a batch of like a suet or other fat that I was cooking because it is, um, you know, everything looks fine, but it tastes burnt and it smells burnt and the house smells burnt. So oh. I know, yeah, like I, I can tell, you know, even though there's no visual evidence, like the smell and the taste is evident. So, um, I've just given up. Like, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. And are you, are you frying it or is this in the, the, uh, the I, air fryer? I've done a bunch of, yes, all, you know, I've done a bunch of different things. So all hmm. the different ways. Um, and you know, and I would like to be able, like I see people on Instagram, like they got a cast iron pan on the stove. There's a lot of oil in there and they're frying a steak in it. And it's almost like it's boiling and this boiling hot fat. And so I try to do that and it's always burned. Like I can smell it. You know, there's, there's smoke coming up. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. What? So yes, yes. Oh, you know what? Are you so using I've cast iron stayed, too? Um, I have. And then I've switched to another pan because I felt like maybe with the cast iron, I'm just, there's, it's just not working for me, but yeah. Okay. So I don't know about the other one, but for me, I have to, um, I put the cast iron, I'll like start it on medium. So like halfway between Mm -hmm. off and high. And once it gets hot enough to start cooking, I'm gradually turning it down as I'm cooking. Cause the cast iron, like is going to keep getting hotter and hotter. Okay. So that's good information. Um, So don't start on the highest temperature and leave it there. No, no. (laughs) No, definitely not. Um, But I actually, so I cooked some trimmings today. That was actually all I had for breakfast today. Um, And there were some crispy bits on the trimmings and that tasted good. Yeah. But it, but you know what? It didn't smell burnt though. It just like a piece of it on the outside got crispy and the inside was like the fat cap on a ribeye. Yeah. So crispy fat is amazing but i don't know how to get there consistently all the time except when that fat is attached to a piece of meat so Mm. you know when i get my steak or my um roast and i cut it up into my little cubes and i cook it in the air fryer that to me is most perfect because i've got the most surface area that is exposed to heat that can get that crunchiness so the fat is you know so much more of the fat gets very crispy and it's delicious. Um, but, uh, you know, any other way I have not figured out how to cook fat. And then I just decided, I don't know, in the olden days, they, you know, ate it raw, they drank it. I don't know. They (laughs) roasted it over a fire. They had a mastodon drumstick. I don't know. I don't know what they did, but I, you know, but I, I, burger. Yeah. I mean, we've been cooking a long time, so I've got to assume that we've had exposure to burned fat for a long time, so it can, can't can be horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. I'm surprised, because, like, you're, you're a good cook. Like, you make some, de- at least as far as looks, I haven't had your food, but it looks delicious. I'm surprised that you haven't figured out cooking fat before. I, for, I've tried. I've spent a lot of time trying and I just I have not figured it out. I think, yeah, a lot of people are saying it's just turning the heat down. And that's really that's what I think it is. I think you just need to start with a lower temperature pan and yeah. just like kind of like flash it. So I did find that um, if I try to do a big chunk of fat, 
by the time the outside gets how I want it, the inside still isn't cooked enough. Yeah. So I like cutting it into smaller pieces. Yeah. And then cooking it. Yeah. Well, my mom used to always get on me. Like, when people ask for bacon, like, I, I would say, do you want it raw or burnt? Because that's the only... <laughs> That's the like, only way I know how to do. And my mom I don't have like, any in between. Yeah. And my mom's like, you 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 have to stand by the bacon. You can't walk away. And I'm like, I don't want to stand there the whole time. And, you know, and it's popping and all this and that, you know. But again, probably my temperature is too high. But, yeah. Yeah, because so, I found uh-huh. frying bacon, um, actually with a lot of things that you're frying and trying to get them to like a kind of perfect consistency, you would rather err on the side of the pan not being hot enough than it being too hot. You can always turn a pan up, but turning something down after the food's already in it is like, then you're, you're conducting surgery. You're like you're trying to <laughs> take, take the pan off the one eye and put it onto an empty one. But if you're like me, I've always got a ton of things on my stove already because I just yeah. don't have enough space. So yeah. there's already like a pan and a tea kettle on the on the stove and they're always in the way. So I'm like moving one pan, moving the hot pan to the other eye, but it's a cast iron. So it's not like it cools off immediately. It's going to stay hot forever. So yeah. I like try to get the food off really quickly. I didn't have a spatula ready, so I got to go grab one of those. Like it's, it's all, it's a surface. Yeah. Versus, like frying eggs, I had to teach myself how to fry good eggs. Mm-hmm. And one is you have to use enough oil. If you under if you under fat the pan, it's not going to work. They're going to stick to the pan. They're going to break when you try to flip them. It's going to be screwed up. Mm-hmm. And then two is you can't cook them too hot. Mm-hmm. So that's an important point. Not so much heat. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So. Bayet says medium heat to start. It's a frying pan, not a SpaceX satellite. <laughs> yes. Savage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. um, uh, um, NMSRA says, wouldn't you just cook it like I'm bacon? Sure. I'm not a bacon person, I just assume. Uh, I don't find that um, beef fat cooks the way bacon does i mean bacon is a little easier and it goes in it it cooks easier but i don't find that beef fat does or the beef fat trimmings i think it depends on how you like your bacon if you're one of those people that um if you really like crispy bacon then yeah beef Mm -hmm. trimmings are going to be easy because no matter how they come out Either you're happy or they're going back into the pan and then you're going to cook them until they're all crispy and burnt. And if that's what you like, then I don't really understand you, but like, then it's easy. I want like, them crispy and not burnt. Right. Like I, I want some crispy on the outside is nice, but I don't have to have it. And yeah, other do. than that, like. I do. You have like to I, have the crispy. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it wobbly and wet. Mm. Okay. So, so when I that's probably I, part of the thing too. Yes, that is absolutely part of the thing. So, you know, I I like pork cracklings. I like when you know they you render the fat and that stuff that's left in there that's crispy and fat and just explodes and melts in your mouth. I like that, but to get that requires so much work. And there's all this rendering and other stuff. And then there's all this liquid fat that you're left with that Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, maybe I'm just going to, you know, have to like forego that. But I I do well with liquid fat. I mean, at this point, I, you know, I guess I've gotten to the point where my gallbladder and my stomach acid, everything is on point. So I, I actually can consume a lot of liquid rendered fat without it being a problem. So I've been making those dipping sauces and you know just taking the pan drippings and adding more fat and just making a dipping sauce and i've been known to drink the remainder of the bowl so um so (laughs) that's where i am that's where i am but oh oh, vomitrocious yeah yeah 
<laughs> but you just want to pick, you know, but the easiest way to get around this is just find the fattiest sources of meat. And there are sources of meat that are very fatty that are not a problem uh, or that are can't be trimmed as much as um, as the steaks and roasts can. So large picture asks you guys thinks ribs are a perfect food like steaks or am I just wishful thinking? Yes. Ribs are very fatty. Very good. Anything on the belly on every animal, that's where they seem to carry their fat. So whether you're talking about salmon belly, pork belly, you know, beef belly, that's where the fat is. So any kind of steaks, belly, um, all of that stuff is really good. Um, the oxtails, a lot of fat in there. Yes. Uh, I forgot about oxtail. Yeah. The short ribs, um, well, any mm -hmm. part of the rib, short ribs or wh whatever part of the rib you're getting. Um, the neck, I think, can have a lot of fat. Um, and then the jowl, that's another place that they even make bacon from, uh, not just the, the belly, but um, on the pig, they do the jowl. And I think even on the, the cow, the cow, that's there's a lot of fat there, too. So, um, that's mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a an Italian... Um, uh, deli meat called, I think I want to say it's guanciale that is, um, it's made from the jowl and it's just very fatty. So, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pork jowl or cheeks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, ribs are excellent. Um, mm -hmm. And okay, broken profit especially I feel like bacon. beef ribs have even more fat than pork ribs a lot of times. Wait, what? Say it again. Beef ribs. I feel like, well, the times I've had beef ribs, it hasn't been that many, but they've had more fat than pork ribs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know. That could just be how they're cut, but who knows? Maybe. Both are great. I wish I could find beef ribs in like an actual store. I've only been able to get them from restaurants so far. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing you said? The um, short the ribs, profit, yes. Like, Oxtail, yes. God, yes. Yeah. Um, and you said neck bones? I think the neck has um, is another fatty area. Hmm. Um, but you know, those are those are some choices. And then usually the chuck roast. I mean, that's that muscle. I think that's up front. And it can have a lot of fat. And this is something that I learned when I went to on a tour with a butcher is that the, um, the, the, you want the, the muscles that do a lot of work because they are supplied by a lot of blood. And there's also a lot of fat there to supply energy for that muscle. So mm -hmm. that's why the chuck roast is very flavorful and very fatty and, um, and also, you know, just it's very nutritious and tasty because it's a working muscle. But something like the um, the cut that the filet mignon comes from, it doesn't work at all. So it's actually kind of bland in flavor and also, you know, doesn't have any fat because it doesn't, you know, it's not a muscle that really needs a lot of energy throughout the day. So when you think about that, whatever steak you're, or whatever part um, animal you're looking at, you know, you kind of look at their body that way and make your choices that way about which ones to get. Um, and then, of course, the ribeye is, you know, very fatty cut. And um, I'm not sure where that comes from. Maybe somewhere up here on the upper back. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. So, uh, Delisa, awesome, a super sticker for a, a salt shaker super sticker. I love it, <laughs> love it. So, um, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And everybody, I was saying in, uh, earlier, we, we now have super chats and super stickers. So, feel free to go ahead and show your support for the work that we're doing and help us to do more of it because we I do enjoy making these videos and um, I definitely am going to start doing more of it. Um, and we'll be launching my Patreon page soon. So that's another way too that I'll be able to provide more, more content. Um, and uh, yeah, Broken Profit loves ribs. Who doesn't love ribs? Um, yeah, we love ribs. I don't know that I know of anyone. Yeah, no, I know a lot of people feel guilty about eating ribs, but I all love ribs. Um, right. And Delisa, another super sticker. Thanks. Written on top of a purple heart. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
um, and broke a prophet. So that's where I carry my fat in the belly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why you got to be careful when the apocalypse comes. Don't get oh. caught because you are the bacon. Oh, you yeah. will be the bacon. I'm calling dibs on broken, po- broken profit right now. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, U-M-M-N-M-S-R-A. I got to find a better way to we say We got to find a way to says, pronounce it. Um, yeah. Namursa. Yeah, I like that. Um, Namursa. No, so, Namursa. I like <laughs> Um, Namursa says, I find too much rendered fat. There's a number on my throat. Um, you know, I, oh, I yeah. do feel that too sometimes. Um, cause there, it, there's acid in the fat and I, I feel like that is, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of what I feel. For me, I get nauseous with too much of it mm. and it, it feels like it is still on my throat, even though I know I swallowed. No, it is still there. You feel it cause it is still there. I mean, it okay. leaves a coating, you know, what fat leaves a coating. Oh, and yeah, that that's probably why it feels not why I feel nauseous then afterwards. Especially beef fat, it's so thick and sticky. So, and especially if it's not really warm, like you know, at ninety eight degrees, which is what it's in is here. It, you know, it's not it's not super runny. So sometimes mm-hmm. I will feel like I need to drink some hot tea or something hot to help, you know, help move it out of the throat area. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't uh I don't I don't like the rendered fat too much either, but what I can do very easily is the sauces. Um mm-hmm. putting that rendered fat with something and then eating it with meat delicious every time, yeah. no problems. So like making um making mayonnaise out of bacon grease, the baconaise or bayo, like that's mm-hmm. great. Um mm-hmm. Any sort of the gravy that A Day put us onto, and now it's all all up and through Black Carnivore. Like that stuff is always really good. Um, yeah. And then I made another liver pate yesterday, and oh, nice! That's a great one, way to use all of that fat that's left over. Oh, it's so good! It's yeah. so good. I feel yeah. like the first time I was winging it, and it did not come out right, but it was still edible. This is good. Mm-hmm. This like, mm-hmm. it's like liver butter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I intend to be making some soon myself, but it really it does um, saving those you know that fat for that purpose is so good, so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I do find um, just generally is that the fat has to come with meat. It can't just be, for me at least, it can't be fat by itself. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm doing that, it can't be much of it at all. So like even today, I had beef trimmings. Those trimmings had a little bit of protein on them, a little bit of lean in them. Mm-hmm. And that was fine. Um, oh, all right. Um is mother in Arabic, and the letters are my kids. Oh. Oh. All right, so I'm going to call you um. Because it's mother. I like that. Is That's that okay? nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she made it her name, so. Yeah. So Seabliss says, at large picture, I like to make an Alabama white sauce or plain mayo. What is an Alabama white sauce? Leave it to Seabliss to have some other secret recipe. Um, okay, Broken Prophet talks about a keto barbecue sauce. Are you talking about G. Hughes? Because that stuff is good. I've had it. It's good. But I definitely find I eat way more when I am using um, the, uh, the that G. Hughes um, barbecue sauce. It's just like, uh, I, like it, it will double how much I eat because it's just, you know, there's something about sweet taste that just increases, you know, the appetite and so on. So there you go. Is um, that the stuff you said it's GQ? G Hughes. Hughes. Mm. H-U-G-H-E-S. Mm. 
And Bayet, thank you. Super sticker, five dollars. That's so awesome. Hippo character repeatedly points to the steamer while chanting, "Get good." <laughs> okay. I feel like awesome. I must thank be. You. I'm supposed to be doing this differently, where I somehow get the sticker to go on the screen. Um, oh, but I see it's in the chat. That's how it is. Um, awesome. I got to learn how to do this a little better. But Wait, there you so go. what's the thing you can do? You can oh, the, put it up so that it shows. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually just looking at it. Um, I see it. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know how in to add the it chat, to the actual screen. In the chat, the actual yeah. the sticker is pointing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so Mia says liver pate tastes like cheese sauce to me. I never quite got there for me, but you sauce. Yeah, but it's good. It can be good. I always found that I had to add onion powder to make it palatable. So right now that I have taken out all spices, I'm a little nervous um, about what to, you know, how to, what to do with it and to, to figure out how to make it, you know, work for me. So I haven't made it yet, but um, you know, we'll be thinking about it. But so that says her body loves it. That is the one place where I have used a spice lately, and it was it was a small amount. It was maybe mm -hmm. half a teaspoon, somewhere from a half to a whole teaspoon, and the whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, mm -hmm. Which it was a it started with a quarter pound of um, liver, so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like I used a lot of onion sauce or onion uh, powder. But. Yeah. Well, I'm taking it all out, doing an experiment, you know, going all in beef, salt, water. So, yeah, I can't I'm not going to do it. But yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Give it a try. Um, um, yeah. I, I, I think I am seeing improvement on doing beef, salt, water. So it's it is there's a oh. difference. Oh yeah, uh, eight eight check in. So how's the the hands and the general inflammation and? Yeah, in, so hands definitely. Um, there's some improvement. I think it's you know since we're talking about an autoimmune thing, I think this is just something that's going to take longer um, mm -hmm. before I can really be sure that I've made you know significant progress or not. Um, but yeah, you know there's definitely some progress, um, less inflammation. And, um, you know, otherwise I feel good. I, now I'm like, why did, was, why was I drinking coffee? Did I know <laughs> about coffee? I don't, I don't even remember. It's like out of my head. So I think it's been 17 or 18 days now. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so I feel generally well rested. I feel good. Um, I'm not missing herbs and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, and the brisket's done. Oh. Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. Um, so wait, but for before I go get that, um, so um, um is how you pronounce mother, not in Arabic, not um, I think. I think that was a, the correction I got. So um, uh, okay. um remember that, um, um um, okay. Um, yeah. Namursa. And a Steve Liss, I love that Alabama white sauce. Um, I wish you could make it for me and send it to me. Because I feel like that's the thing I am just not going to get it together Wait, with. So you've had this this magical thing before? I uh, No, I have not. But she describes it. It's uh, like a mayo base with a, a spicy kick and extra vinegar to make it saucy. Oh, okay. Sounds good. So, so I don't do it spicy, but maybe. Yeah. Just like not a spicy kick, but like a, a spicy like poke. Mm -hmm. I yeah. might be able to do that. Okay, so you keep going through some of these comments. I see there's a lot while I go get this, um, to at least turn the timer off on the oven because mm -hmm. that's super annoying. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It wasn't that annoying to me. I'm just saying it can be annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm still not understanding how liver can taste like cheese sauce. That's just that feels weird to me. Uh, broken profit. First of all, I'm gonna need you to stop noticing every time that I go off about something that tastes really good. Apparently, I do that a lot tonight. That that's not a normal thing for me. Um, now about the beard, it is 
it's not new. It's not like I, I've been growing this beard since probably. It's it's been at least like six years or so. Um, I do feel like it grows differently now that I'm carnivore. Like all this hair is gone, so I gotta take pride in the little bit of like hair that I have left. And I feel like this hair is more soft now, and I think it grows a little faster. That maybe I may be making up that second one, but definitely it's it's softer. Um, it's easier to uh, manage now. It just it feels less uh, dry. And I may have gotten better at taking care of it. Actually, I'm sure I have. But I also think that as part of like my skin feels better now. I think also my hair has gotten better. And maybe if I went carnivore away earlier, um, I wouldn't have lost this hair or at least not lost it so quickly. I've actually seen some people say that they're... Um, some of their balding hair has come back going carnivore. I'm waiting for that to happen for me, but I don't think it's going to. It's been a couple years and I'm not seeing any evidence that it's going that way. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. I was over there with a crunchy beard. Yeah, especially on the days I didn't really take care of it. Like if I just came out the shower and it was just wet and I just let it dry and then tried to put some like some oil or butter on it afterwards, not milk butter, like shea butter or something. Um, yeah, it would it would be bad. And I could feel the badness. I could feel that it wasn't, like this is much more pleasing now than what it used to be. It was a crunchy beard for sure. Um, oh, that's cool. So Broken Profit, yours feels like it's growing super fast now, too. Yeah. And I do feel like, so, like, I'm not bald all up here. I'm mostly bald on the top. And then the rest of my hair still grows. And I feel like this hair grows faster, too, and I have to shave more often. I really feel it if I don't shave, like, every, like, day and a half or so. Whereas I feel like I used to get away with shaving um, a little less often. Like, I could wait another day and not shave. Annie, does your hair feel any different on carnivore? Uh, no. All the same. Yeah. Okay. This beard is is still super soft. <laughs> as soft as ever. <laughs> um. <laughs> I can't stand you. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. Okay. So I. Here, I don't know. Can we see? So, I didn't take a big up, piece. Probably. Yeah, I think you can see. So, okay, um, this is the uh, the brisket, and I think I didn't put enough salt on, but I'm gonna taste it first. But it looks really good. My dog is sitting right here with me. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I this really... one turned out better than my last one, but not as good as the very first one. The first one was divine. See, y'all are really making me... I got a brisket in my freezer. I'm going to have to cook that, like, this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as you possibly can. All right, Bait and Sopo says, do not drop it. I know, that would suck right on my uh, keyboard. <laughs> and Virginia's going crazy, just look at that. Yeah. Um, just looking at the the brisket. And okay, Broken Prophet says he feels like he's been finding less grays. And he I even found a gray hair that. that went black near the root. Like I it started out gray and now it's switching back to black. I, I need some of that in my life. Granted, I don't have a bunch of grays in the first place. I feel like I've got maybe 10 or 15 in the entire beard, but they're like, they're long and I feel like they're thicker than the other hairs, so they stand out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gray hair is a different texture. It doesn't take dye 
um, very well either. Mm. So yeah, it's so, um, it's definitely a thing. No hair club for men for me, I guess. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Um, but no, okay. I like my couple gray hairs. I don't. I mean, not on you. Like <laughs> I, I'm not supporting gray hair on me. I'm not. You know, I'm not going easily into that dark night. I am fighting it every step of the way. Yeah. (laughs) No, I just, I had to embrace mine the same way I had to embrace this going. Like, this went in my late 20s. Like, I was like, well, not late 20s. It was starting to go in my 20s. It was bad enough that I just, I couldn't hold on to it anymore by the time I was 30. Like, Mm -hmm. I just, I had to let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Super thick and shiny. Yes. The gray hairs are like, they look like the healthiest hairs I could have, except that they're the wrong color. It's just how they are. Just how yeah. they are. Um, so let's see. Wow. There are a lot of comments in here now. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So um, uh, it seems like that <laughs> Alabama white sauce is really doing well. So see bliss, if you could um, make a uh, write up something and post it in the Facebook group or something, that would be super helpful. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I saw um, see bliss put me on the steak and butter gal mm-hmm. and she made a spicy mayo. That was just basically, um, mayonnaise and like sriracha or a spicy sauce and uh, i can't remember what the third ingredient was but it came out yellow and creamy and it looked really good Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah everyone needs brisket and oh yes broken profit i'm eating on camera um <laughs> Coffee shots for donos. I am not not going to turn into a mukbang channel. And um, yeah, uh, I will. I will. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, we're not doing that. Um, Let's see. Um says um, I've heard people say uh, with carnivore, their hair got darker. Yeah. I yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely have heard that. Um, Can't tell with my hair, though. Right. Uh, So I'm hoping that my beard at least stays mostly black because of me going carnivore now. mm -hmm. I'll at least get to hold on to this. Like, I'm not, I'm going to embrace it when it goes gray. I'm going to embrace the hell out of it. And I'm going to be total silver fox. Like, I think that'll probably look good. I'll be happy with that. But I don't want it now. I want to enjoy this for like another, I don't know, 15 years or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know. You know, I see Mia said that her hair got thicker when she went carnivore. I don't know. My hair has always been super thick. um, So I didn't really notice a difference, but um, I had also been natural for a long time and, you know, been super careful. you know, I, I, I had to choose between color or straight. I couldn't do both. So, um, you know, I've been super careful about trying to maintain long hair while still doing, you know, some pretty heavy processing. So. Oh, yeah, because each one is going to like on its own. Um, yeah. Work on your hair, right? I, yeah. Not work on it like a good thing, but like. Yeah. In a bad degrade? way. What's the word? Sure. Dam- damage. Yeah, also a good one. Yeah, okay. all of those yeah. things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've had to <laughs> be pretty careful. Um, so, yeah, we so we have gone over the top five things that we have found to be a problem when going when starting on the carnivore diet. And I hope that you got some information today that you know uh, helps you kind of figure out what some of the challenges that you're facing or help you to be a little bit more targeted as you start your carnivore journey and as you continue your carnivore journey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and back to number five, um, that GU sauce, all of them have sucralose. 
Yep. That's the sweetener. Yeah. I don't know. I I like my ribs plain. Well, not plain, but like just put some salt on them. They're really good. Like some salt and some cinnamon, um, like a dry rub. Those are always good. I don't I don't need sauce, but I, I never did love barbecue sauce. Not on ribs. I loved barbecue sauce. Loved. And I didn't <laughs> understand until I went keto and I looked at the container and it's like, oh, it has two to three times as much sugar as ketchup. Now yeah. I understand why I love this. It's ketchup plus extra sugar. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like ketchup plus what, like brown sugar, and basically you've got barbecue sauce. Like, I remember thinking it was a, uh, I remember thinking it was fancy to put barbecue sauce on hamburgers, like to order oh, yeah. a order a burger from Wendy's or something, and then go like, no, 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 I'm gonna put y'all on to something new. Yo, <laughs> give give me the barbecue sauce, <laughs> and then they. Like, I'm like, oh, barbecue sauce on burger for the first time. Like, this is magical. I've never known. It didn't even occur to me that you could do this. Mm-hmm. It's like the first time somebody mixed uh, uh, corn pops and cinnamon toast crunch in a bowl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, these are so good. And they're good together. Why didn't I think of this? And yeah. then it's like, oh, well, what you did was you put more sugar on my burger than I was having before. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, that tastes really good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Broken Prophet, oh my God, gave me a super chat, $5, testimonial. I am down 25 pounds thanks to Sis A Day and the Black Carnivore channel and support. Thank you so much. And he still misses cheese. Um, I, yeah, I am so proud of you, though. And, and the 25 pounds is not even the biggest of it. It's the breathing, you know, the asthma. Like, that is the biggest thing to, uh, to improve and probably will continue to improve as you go along the way. But, wow, think about how much more powerful and capable you are in your life because you are eating a nutrient-dense diet. So I'm so happy for you, and I'm really excited to see all of the progress that uh, you continue to make. That is awesome. That yeah. 25 pounds down, and you said his asthma's gotten way better. Mm -hmm. that's huge yeah yeah so that's 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 the ticket being able to breathe awesome stuff yeah and Um, i still miss cheese i feel you mm -hmm. at at some point though cheese kind of stops being a thing like Mm -hmm. i have hamburgers and i have to think about like do i actually want cheese on this because my habit is still to put cheese on it but Half the time, I decide not to put the cheese on, and I really don't miss it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. I thought that I would miss it, and then I went a few days without it in the beginning, and then it was like, oh, you know, just like with the coffee. Like, why was this a big deal? Why, why was I making a big deal about this? Right. Did you figure out what to do for your morning routine? Coffee list? Oh, I nothing. So just nothing. <laughs> just regular old boring morning now. No yeah. coffee routine. Yeah, no no beverage at all, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I've just sort of lost interest in that, especially since I decided to stop having the tea. You know, I, I don't know if I said it here, but, you know, we had talked about salicylates being a problem for eczema. And, yeah. um, and then I had a cup of peppermint tea and found, you know, my hands and eczema were really flaring up like within the hour and, mm-hmm. uh, realizing, looking it up and seeing that, you know, peppermint has a lot of, um, you know, has a lot of salicylates and causes a lot of problems. And it was like, Oh, that's what's going on here. So, yeah, yeah, I could, I could see that. Um, so yeah, I haven't no had more tea at all. No, nothing. It's just beef, salt, water. I haven't had any. I haven't had any tea in a little while. Um, small amounts, not small, but like a moderate amount of coffee, about mm-hmm. two cups worth. Um, mm-hmm. But like spread out because I'm making weak cups of coffee, and. 
Mm-hmm. It's decent. I haven't felt any issues. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and another think... super chat for Broken Prophet. Thank you. So, yes, he feels so much better, um, breathing better, and at some point going to stream looking like D'Angelo in the <laughs> How Does It Feel video. Oh. Yeah. Oh, or, I'll or be there. Looking like uh, I'll Jamie be there. Fox when mm-hmm. he parodied it on the Jamie Foxx show. <laughs> 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 oh, you got to get the fake braids too. <laughs> mm. Well, I'll be there. I, you know, but I, I would like to take uh, a little bit, <laughs> a bit of credit for pushing you forward to go on this diet, and I'm really excited to see those abs. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I mean, this is not all about body goals. It's also about health, and being able to breathe is a really big deal. It's a yeah. Really big deal. That's great. All right, and, uh, guys. <laughs> Abigail cooked a 12-pound brisket for her and her husband mm-hmm. and used the fat drippings to make a dipping sauce. That's a huge brisket, 12 pounds. Yeah, mine's three pounds. Sheesh. Um, okay, so Um is asking for my gravy recipe. So Seabless, I think, does it better than anybody. So um, Seabless, I don't know if you can put that info in there, but... Uh, basically, I just take the pan drippings um, and add a little more, um, well, maybe add a little more fat and then just use my immersion blender and blend it up. Now, I don't know what happened, um, but in a one batch, it just emulsified and made this like mayo-like substance. And I continued to reuse it and just sort of add the new pat- fat drippings to it. So it continued to emulsify. But then mm. when I started a new batch, it wouldn't. So I don't know. I don't know what was in that first batch that allowed it to do that. I know that I had cooked um, a bunch of, um, I think I had, it, it had a lot of fat in it and, I mean, bone in it. There were bones in there and um, they had started to disintegrate a little bit. So, um, so I it there was bone. I don't know if that was part of what did it, but yeah, I was very disappointed that um, I haven't been able to to continue it. But other people have. I look at other people's sauces and it looks amazing. So I don't know, but in any yeah. event, it tastes good. Right. You know what I found sometimes? Um, I think we've talked before about like fat just tasting different sometimes, like mm-hmm. um, like different fat from different parts of the animal, Mm -hmm. not even just suet versus, Mm -hmm. I don't, don't, did we, did we find out what the word was for regular beef fat? I think it's still just tallow. Okay. I mean, if it's rendered, you're saying, or just, I think it's just before rendering beef fat trimmings. Like, I don't think if it's not suet, I don't think there's a specific name. Yeah, all right, we need a word for that. Or, like, I don't know, somebody should have made up a word for it because we have words for everything else. But, yeah, because suet's only the fat around the organs. But um, I feel like mine has come out different at different times and even in the same batch, like I, I was doing what you do, like just mm-hmm. add more fat to it, uh, add a little of the broth too, like cook a steak, some of the water that cooks off the steak, pour that in. Um but it would sometimes be gritty and that's the same kind of gritty texture that some beef fat has if you let it cool and then try to eat it. Like it's not smooth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there've been other times, even off of a steak where I can eat the fat after and it's still smooth. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's the fat that's being used. Maybe sometimes it's just not going to be as smooth as we want it to be. Yeah. I don't know. It just, yeah. So, um, let's see. Uh, Broken Prophet said, Ada is so passionate about this diet and her pushing and motivating motivation was awesome. She doesn't fuss, but I told her I ate a burger with a bun and she <laughs> looked at me with all disappointed. I got back <laughs> on track. <laughs> yeah. He gave him that, that, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> and he got it together. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, all right. So Seabliss has a process for making this sauce. So she is going to, I'm going to leave it to her 
um, because she is the, you know, the uh, unofficial carnivore um, uh, chef. And I wish mm. there were a way um, to get her to cook a little on camera. It would be awesome to have like a, a cooking show once a month or something where we just let her show us how to make this stuff. Um, because, you know, it, 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 there's still a lot to learn. There's always things to learn on how to prepare food. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they're much easier things to learn or much more simple. It's just like a technique mm -hmm. um, or something you get a feel for. It's not a long, drawn out, complicated recipe. But yeah, there's always, there's that looking, there's, or there's that learning, there's that saying that you could do things a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. You still pretty much got it down pat. You still feel like, oh, no, I'm an experienced carnivore. I know how to cook for myself. But, oh, oh, snap. I didn't know that I could do a gravy. I can make a gravy with this fat. I can make pate with this fat. All this extra fat that I've got just floating around. Mm hmm Yeah. So Um asks, where will she put it? I'm not sure, Seabliss. Um, well, Seabliss asked if you were on Instagram. So... Um, if you are definitely find each other, um, or put your Instagram handle in here so we can send it to you. Um, yes, I did give you the down look in the head shake. Uh, <laughs> that, that's my look of, um, disappointment. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> and Ulm also brought up, um, breathing can become a problem due to a smaller face structure due to eating too soft of food because chewing is important. Yes. I have seen, heard from multiple like scientists, anthropologists type of people that um, giving kids meat chewing to gum. chew on. <laughs> Solve that with chewing gum. I was a master chewing gum. Uh, you know, I, I won many bubble blowing contests. I, chewing gum was like my thing. So I feel like I had the jaw structure. But yeah, if you don't get stuff to chew, your your jaw will not um, you will not develop the muscles that you need. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you know, I you know, as long as you're supplying your kids with enough bubble gum, and it's got to be the hard stuff, you know, not the soft like orbits, but you got to get into the bazooka joes, the um, you know, not bubblicious, but hubba bubba, you know. Is this really what we're doing? <laughs> hey. I mean, you know, we, it's a workout. This is working out. This is exercise. I actually, I really do miss gum and I have been looking for gum that has nothing added. Just, just the plastic or the, the rubber or whatever gum is now made of just so I have something to <laughs> chew. So I, I, it has occurred to me to actually pr just try to produce something like this. Like just call up the Hubba Bubba, you know, company and say, you know, who's your supplier? Can you just make me a batch with no flavoring? Nothing, nothing in it. And, and they're like, they're going to be like, oh, you want original? And you're going to say, no, 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 because that has sugar. Yeah. I don't want that. Nothing, nothing, nothing in it. That's what I want. <sighs> so I feel like that there's got to be a way to do this. Maybe uh, going on Alibaba, there's, you know, that's where all of the, the vendors are. See if I can't find somebody who'll make it. I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to buy a pallet uh, for like a thousand dollars, and this is gonna be enough gum to last a lifetime. Because <laughs> nobody See, else is gonna want it. Yo, so like, catch Black Carnivore in two weeks, where instead of that chair or that picture of A Day, there is now just a human-sized pile of gum. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> See, and here I thought you were like being sarcastic and you were going to say, yeah, so gum does it. But like we could also give these kids meat and they can chew on that. No, no. It is serious about the gum thing. I Yeah. <laughs> where I was going with that was people used to give their kids meat. Yeah. There's as soon that. as they as soon as they can start chewing, give them meat and it builds up their jaw structure and their muscles the same way that gum would. Mm hmm. Yeah. So Um says it helps to widen the lower structure of the face from the eyes down. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, and yes, like, broken profit gum used to be made of rubber. Um, that was the first thing. Now it's plastic, but it used to be rubber. Well, should you be chewing on plastic? I mean, great question. I've been doing it since 70 something, but you know, <laughs> yeah. But rub, uh, I think the first brand of gum was um, chiclets, which came from, I guess the word for that rubber tree in South America was chicle. And so mm. that's how they came up with that name. But the first, well, I guess there was a general down there that used to, you know, just chew on it to, for stress relief. And so that's how, like, the idea came to make the gum. And then, he, you know, he had it. It was just straight up rubber, no flavoring or anything. But then later on, um, people um, put flavoring and stuff in it. So. Oh, it Yeah. There's this but, stuff called Feline. It's sugarless plain gum. It's oh, it's mint flavored. But it's it's, it's flavored. It's but it's flavor. sugarless means it's got, um, usually that means artificial sweeteners. Well, see, it said plain, so I was hoping that that was, mm -hmm. but no, it's mint flavored But anyway. see, if you yeah. look over here, if, I don't know if you can see, no, wait, I'm looking the wrong way. That is a rubber tray. So I could get a little wild and make my own gum from my own rubber mm. tray. Um, okay. Yeah, you could. Yeah. You could also just, so I find the, like, the really gristly parts of meat are just fun to chew on after I'm done eating. Mm. So I'll sit with a bone and gnaw off every piece of, um, every piece of meat and gristle that's on it. And it might take me like 20 minutes and I'm completely satisfied on chewing after that like i did that at my parents house um the last time i was over there and my I think it was my dad made fun of me like yeah i started to um tell your mother like i wish we had made a fourth they made pork steaks so there's this like weird kind of flat bone in there in the at least in these ones and i chewed every piece of edible thing off of it and they were like I guess we should have just made four. And I was like, no, no, this isn't even that I'm hungry. This is just fun now. <laughs> Maybe it was me satisfying the gum urge. Um, I don't take pleasure on chewing on the cartilage or the gristly bits or any of that. I really uh... I don't like that. I did try, I did overcook, you know, some something that had um, bones in it. So the bones were really soft and I did try chewing on it. Um, ate a little. I don't see what the appeal is, but my, my dog loves it. I've seen her go to town and like eat almost a whole bone. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Hey, Broken Profit, great suggestion. Hit the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell icon so we can get notification every time. So you can get notification every time we go uh, live and, um, and you will enjoy all of the delightful things on this channel. Yeah. And um, there is super chatting and super stickers. I just started doing this, so definitely feel free to dive in there. Very excited about it. Um, oh, and Mia's 19-month-old nephew was v chewing on a bone, and she felt so proud. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have been on here over two hours, so um, I need to go and dive in on the rest of that brisket. Um, so I, yeah, I'm I'm still pretty hungry, but you know I don't want to um, I don't want to get too sloppy and uh, you know try to be ladylike. This isn't that kind of party. Y'all didn't pay enough for that. Yeah, and not lick the plate or anything like that. <laughs> um, so. This is carnival so, after dark, but it ain't that kind of party. Yeah, I yeah I I don't think you sh should ever expect me to do mukbang. I, I don't know. I don't think so. Sloppy, chewy sounds, licking the plate. No, no. <laughs> There's just a certain level, you know. We're um, I have a, a female dog. I'm female. We you know we have a certain level of decorum in the household, and even though she might like when I cook bacon, the well she will go and lick the floor around the stove. <laughs> Why are you telling on her? So I stop her from doing that because we're a ladylike household and we don't need that. 
but it does tell you how much she likes the bacon grease. And, and I do. It does smell good. But I'm not going to lick the floor or lick the plate. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Wow. Uh, I need one more like to get to 40. Thank oh, you there you go. Profit. I appreciate that. So I got to stay on until we get one more like. It just hit the uh, last screen. <laughs> Um, Steve Bliss says, so y'all know if you want a better show, you got to give more. So I, I am saying there is a limit. There's no amount of money that's going to give you the show with me licking the plate. <laughs> I'm just saying. No carnivore mukbang. Yeah. No black carnivore mukbang. <laughs> no, no. Um, but, um, but you know, we should do like some kind of cooking show, cooking show or something like that. Cause I definitely see based on the conversation tonight too, that there are people struggling to, um, you know, learn how to, to cook and to prepare food. And we have not been taught how to cook meat and, uh, you know, and, and cooking is like, it's like chemistry, you know, it doesn't, um, it's something that you, uh, just have to know how the pieces go together and, um, and then, you know, just kind of do them, but we haven't been taught that. And so we can't, you know, you can't necessarily just figure it out. Hmm. So, um, oh, and Virginia loves the colors I'm wearing tonight. I know pink and magenta is just pink, magenta, purple. Like that's my, that's my jam. Yeah. Yeah. They look good on you. Yeah. And Seabliss, I don't lick the plate at all. We just don't do that here. We're, you know, we just got rules here in this household now. Wait, so even off camera, you don't lick the plate? No. No. Wow. No. Yeah. I do not. Huh. So, I, you know, you just got to draw a line somewhere. So that's where I drew the line. All right. So this is a classy affair. Mm -hmm. And y'all need to y'all need to act like it, like know where you are. <laughs> Tuck in your shirts. Yeah. Um, your shirt needs to have a collar on it, unless you're eight A, because eight A can do what she wants. Like y'all have been acting up on these streams, and clearly this is a classier affair than you thought you were coming to. Yes. You need to get that together. We don't lick plates around here. We don't like plates. We are sophisticated. Here. Yeah. We eat fine cheeses. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> plates. <laughs> we eat fine cheeses and caviar. We drink sparkling water <laughs> from the, the hills and the Alps of, in Switzerland. like Somewhere. Any right. hill, yeah. any Alp. They're all good. So the Broken Prophet says I would donate big for a plate licking show or <laughs> or shots of fat. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> you basically um, do shots of fat. You just do them with a spoon. Yeah. Or or drink from the bowl. I don't drink from the plate. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's got to be from a bowl. You know. Like, yeah. Everybody has to have a code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has to have a code. Honor, sophistication, um, <laughs> truthfulness. Uh, right, right. Don't Integrity. Kill people, don't lick the plate. Right, right. <laughs> like these are the good things. Like that was the Eleventh Amendment. Don't lick the plate. I mean, the the Eleventh. Uh, dang, you can tell I haven't been to church in a while. What are those called? <laughs> Commandments. Yes, yes. Yeah. Those, those. Yeah, yeah. So Steve Bliss says, I got to let my hair down and get hedonistic. I, you know, I do. I, I got here by being hedonistic, right? <laughs> I, I indulged every <laughs> desire for chocolate <laughs> and candy and wine. So, you know, I did that. We're, we're done with that. Mm -hmm. um, Martine says these are, these are her colors as well. The pinks, the, the, um, magentas and so on. So awesome. I'm sure they look great on you too. Um, and uh, Esther says, I do when I have great juice in my plate. It's rude to leave it there on the plate. Yeah, well, it is. You know, that's why I try to organize like the bites with the juices so that there isn't leftover. I mean, it requires a little planning ahead. Yeah. I mean, no one said that being sophisticated was easy. Mm -hmm. If it was, then everybody would do it. 
But we here at the Black Carnivore hold you to a higher standard. Yeah. So, Mar- so Martine says we bougie. Right. <laughs> yes, that is exactly. That is that needs to be the tagline. Black Carnivore, we bougie. We bougie. <laughs> We don't do that here. <laughs> That's just not how we behave. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on next time. My beard's going to be braided. Sivala <laughs> uh, <laughs> says there is a sophisticated way to lick a plate. I don't have to lick like a savage. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think it works that way. I think you either... I think you can try. Like what? Well, if you bend down to the plate, then you look like a dog licking a plate. So you can't do that. <laughs> and if you hold the plate up to you, it's then risk. great risk. Right. Like one, juices are going to be falling. Two, mm-hmm. besides the people who are right in front of you, everyone else sees you like whole tongue out, like scraping it across the plate. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what this sophisticated way is. Mm-hmm. That's what um, you need to put on Instagram. <laughs> a video. Here's here is how you sophisticatedly lick a plate. There's right, no right. Yeah. Show me There's this no black way. magic. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> Melvina says plate licking is my dad's pet peeve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sophisticated or sensual, same difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is he? Yep. <laughs> get, a say, get a straw <laughs> you know i i might take that before i i did just straight up licking i i do have a metal straw um so yeah maybe i could do that yeah i uh, not not opposed to that um okay so and esther says that's too much trouble slurp that juice up Oh, See, oh, I don't know how we got here. We're now at after dark, right? This just uh, became, and an Arian, Esther had been so Arian, well behaved. An Aryan juice in the beard. <laughs> oh, I blame Seabliss. Yeah, yeah, you you started that oh. all off. Uh. Um. <laughs> Yeah, C. Bliss was thinking about the sensual. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, this is getting um, this is getting down and dirty. Right. Okay, so let's let's bring abort this stream. <laughs> let's support. This has been a great time. I have so enjoyed having this conversation. I hope that you got some good information. You got to eat me eat a little, see me eat a little brisket. And you are inspired to go make your own briskets, roasts, and gravies. And I'm looking forward to hearing about how it goes. Post on Instagram, tag me, post on Facebook. Let me know. I really want to see the results. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great night, and I will see you next week. Good night, everyone. Good night.